Hey guys, I'm Lexery. Some of you may know me as the cursed mouse grip girl who holds her mouse sideways. I'm a GM3 peak support main specializing in Ana and Kiriko. I have played a lot more Kiriko since her release, just for the fact alone that she's just really fun and gives support this whole new approach. So with that said, I'm here to talk to you guys about Kiriko and give you a really helpful tip that can hopefully improve your gameplay and put some more wins in your pocket. When I had first picked up Kiriko, I didn't really grasp the potential she had to make plays and get picks and really played her like a traditional support. I found myself always glued to the main fight and never looking for opportunities to hold off angles and contest their backlines on my own, despite having two get out of jail free cards that would make it really easy to get in and get out. My tip being, simply put, Kiriko is literally made for these risky plays. Her teleport and Suzu open so many doors for you to go on flanks, draw attention to yourself as you're on their supports, and get out when you need to. With that said, always make sure your team is close enough to teleport to and be mindful of when you're throwing down Suzu during the duel because you don't want to get too eager and end up back at your spawn room. I hope this small tip is an eye opener for many of you as it was for me and gets you some more SR and cool clips for your upcoming montage. If you'd like to see my Kiriko plays, or you just want to yell at me from a mouse grip, you can find me at twitch.tv slash Lexery. I also upload on YouTube at Lexery and sometimes make funny posts on Twitter at LexG. Hello Tse, I'm Sammy, a Chrome Master's main support and streamer who has recently moved more into Flex support. I'm here to talk about the fanging on Kiriko, using teleport to evade ultimates and taking and holding space with Kitsune. While many players often use her as a healing support with a passive approach, it's important to recognize her potential for significant kill pressure thanks to her high damage headset. To effectively apply this kill pressure, consider adapting an assertive offline playstyle, distancing yourself from your team and fanging before the start of each fight and whenever suitable opportunities arise. By doing so, you can capitalize on opening stone gates enemies and employ pressure. You can effectively force snipers, flying bears and supports out of their preferred positions. Whenever you manage to force opponents to use critical cooldowns, resources, or when your team requires your assistance, you can quickly teleport back to your team for healing before relocating to another aggressive position. This strategy grants a massive advantage for your team, as enemy will be lacking essential abilities or team members for the incoming fight. Kiko's true value lies in her ability to engage in duels and apply pressure from strategic off angles, while still fulfilling her supportive role for the team when necessary. If your team struggles to stay up with your offangling and requires a decent no support, it is better to prioritize peeling for them rather than pursuing offangling. Kiko can avoid Divine Sigma ultimates by teleporting to a teammate which grants her invincibility for the teleportation duration, similar to Moira's fate. However, the success of this trick relies on careful timing. If you find yourself in a flux, make sure to teleport to a teammate inside the ultimate ring as soon as it appears. This way, you can stay safe and avoid taking any damage. As for Diva's ultimate, precise timing is essential to survive. Time you teleport invincibility just as the bomb goes off. Additionally, I noticed that many players forget the capability of taking and holding space with Kitsune. Instead of letting the enemy dictate where the fight will take place, you can utilize Kitsune to hold ground proactively, gaining an upper hand in the fight before the enemy can respond where they want to. Kitsune offers several versatile uses, including zoning the enemy, tackling through cooldowns faster, and creating a threat with higher damage output that discouraging enemies from moving up. Additionally, Kitsune can be deployed to provide assistance to teammates or execute strong combos with the teammates resulting. These tips will improve your gameplay skill and add to your team's overall success. Good luck implementing them in your games. Hello, my name is Ara Mori. I am a top 500 flex support player who plays a lot of Kiriko. I also play flex support for New York Excelsior Academy, and I'm here to teach you some tips and tricks for Kiriko. When trying to understand how to climb as Kiriko, one of the most important things that you can be focused on is her Suzu usage. Um, Suzu is a very unique ability, uh, as it is the only like cleanse ability within Overwatch, right? Um, and because of its powerful, you know, uniqueness, uh, it also has one of the longest cooldowns within Overwatch. So making how you use Suzu is so important um, to Kiriko's kit, and it's one of the most impactful things that can help you climb. 
So when you're playing Kiriko and you're deciding when to use Suzu, it's important to understand who you're playing against. So if you're in ranked and you're playing versus, let's say, an Ana, for example, you may want to save your Suzu for her nade. Um, lots of times, Annas will try to bait your Suzu by sleeping a target, uh, and then only nading after you cleanse the sleep. Oh um, my god! But a good Kiriko will not be baited by this and will try to save Suzu for when the nade actually comes out, even if somebody is like slept on the floor, for example. Another good example for trying to save Suzu is if the enemy team has big ults, so like a Reaper ult or Mei ult or Grav, right? Um, you can save Suzu and try to time it with their ults. So a lot of times um, versus Reaper, you can kind of like Suzu the ground and like push him away at the same time that you save your teammates and yourself. Um, for the Mei ult, right? You can Suzu your teammates completely out of the Mei ult. It will completely cleanse the slow effect and you can carry fights that way. Something small that I like to do to help my team play around my Suzu better is if I know that a big ult like Junker Queen ult is coming, I will tell my team to stack with me. Um, the Junker Queen will, will see a big group of people and she'll ult and then we'll immediately cleanse all together because we're stacked. Now in the realm of Suzuing, let's say the enemy team has nothing crazy that you're looking to Suzu. So they don't really have Junker Queen ult, uh, maybe they don't have an Ana, right? They're just kind of playing some default, maybe head scans or something. Wow. Um, something you can look to do is to Suzu aggressively. And so what I mean by this is you can, if it's like a, a boopy map, you can look to toss people off the edge. Um, this is kind of like a <laughs> cheesy strat, but a lot of people won't, won't see it coming. You can get close and, and boop them off the map. You can also with your Suzu cooldown, try to dual DPS. Now this I would only recommend doing if you um, are confident in hitting your kunai, but um, a lot of times you'll see a lot of Overwatch League level players will dual an enemy team tracer um, with their Su Suzu cooldown um, and knowing that, hey, they can they can hit the headshot in melee, the tracer, and she'll die. Um, and they can usually just like force recall um, and just keep dueling them and it's, it's really really strong and it's a good way to carry in your ranked games too Also as a side note to add in the same vein as using Suzu aggressively You can also use it to enable your DPS ults um, So like Genji Blade, Reaper Blossom um, Anything that requires your DPS to go in you can also Suzu them forward if you're not trying to save it for anything um, defensively Yeah, so to to summarize, don't be afraid to use Suzu for yourself aggressively yes, yes, yes. if there's nothing to really save it for and, and take some duels with the enemy team DPS. Um, but also keep in mind like things that you would have to save it for, like Reaper ult, Junker Queen ult, Anna Nade, May ult, all that kind of stuff. Just keep in mind. This has been Aramori. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Javo. I'm a GM5 support and DPS player. If you're interested, you can find me at my YouTube channel, Javofo. But anyway, I'm here with Gulpy today to give you a tip for my favorite new character, Kiriko. Do you want to have crispy aim with her and hit those juicy headshots? Well, let me tell you the trick. First of all, always have your crosshair at head level. And when aiming your kunai, only aim left and right. This makes landing those headshots easier as you won't have to worry about vertical aim at all. Next step is to lead your shots. When I'm in a duel, I like to place my crosshair in the opposite direction of where they are currently strafing just because I know that they're about to change directions and strafe in the other direction. And as soon as they do, I throw my kunai. Watching the opponent's movement and predicting how they're strafing is the best way to consistently land these headshots. The higher rank you go, however, the better their strafing will be. So be aware. Also, to ensure your mechanics are up for the task, make sure you try out workshop code ACZKK. Then go into custom game settings, heroes, general, and turn receive headshots only to enabled. Then you could start the game. Do this for a good amount of time and make sure you're warmed up. I also recommend going into deathmatch or find a tryhard deathmatch in the custom games browser. For me personally, I wouldn't dare going into competitive before making sure my mechanics were warmed up because the better you play, the more fun it'll be and the higher chance of winning games. Good luck with the grind, fellas.
What's up everyone, I'm Paz, a top 500 and previous high tier 3 support player, now educational content creator, with another tip for Kiriko. If you are trying to climb consistently with Kiriko, you'll want to make sure you are getting everything you can out of her kit, especially her ultimate. While it is incredibly strong, you want to make sure that you don't use it when you are down too many players. This is because the ultimate generates exponential value the more people you have alive and vice versa. In simpler terms, you want to make sure you are giving as many people lower cooldown times as possible. On top of this, you want to make sure you use it as close to the enemy as possible without letting them walk past it, as generally the answer to this ultimate is getting out right away or pushing harder than you. Because of all these tips, the best way to get the most consistent value is to start the fight with your ultimate when you have forward momentum you intend to follow up upon. If you are interested in more tips from me, you can find guides to Kiriko as well as all of the other supports on my YouTube channel as well as all of my other socials at Paz Swagger. On to the next tip. Hello, I am Time, also known as All Out of Time on Twitch, and I am a Grandmaster Kiriko man. I've been playing Kiriko since she came out and was asked by Gulpy to give a few tips on how to climb with her. The first thing that I would recommend is understanding your abilities. Protection, Suzu, and Swift Adapt are Kiriko's abilities. I found the best way to use your abilities is in nasty situations. Kiriko has the abilities needed in order to alter a team fight. Both Suzu and Swift Adapt in appropriate times and places will make you climb easily. For instance, if your teammate gets anti, then you want to Suzu them. The only times this doesn't work is if your teammate is in no immediate danger. I would also recommend using Suzu against Honest Sleep Dart. If someone on your team gets slept, Protection Suzu has the ability to wake them up and make them available again in the current fight. Swift Dept is also very important for getting out of fights. Swift Dept is essentially a get out of jail free card. If you're in a hairy situation and you have a teammate that you can teleport to, that's what you'd want to use Swift Dept for. She also has an insane 120 damage per kunai when hitting a headshot, but this means that she has the ability to get a pick during a team fight. She has very good mobility and her kit complements that perfectly. Suzu is also very important around ultimate. Protection Suzu is a huge counter for a lot of ultimates in the game. By having the cleanse effect, she can save her entire team from Rhine Shatter, Sigma's Flex, and Junker Queen's Rampage just to name a few. If you save your abilities and use them only when necessary, you can save your team from certain death. Just remember to use your abilities only when needed and to output damage when you can to help your team win the fight. Save Suzu, understand when to dive or poke when you're DPSing and you're not healing, and remember to use Swift Up. Hey everyone, my name is Bumhart, a peak top 500 support player. I'm gonna be going over fundamental Kiriko settings that will help improve your gameplay. Number one, swap your primary and secondary fire. This change makes your kunais your primary fire and your afudas as your secondary fire. This will help you aim better because we naturally use the primary fire to shoot weapons and kunais require more precise aim than afudas. Number two, change your swift step sensitivity to 100%. This will give you a much larger radius to teleport to, making it easier and faster to TP. Number three, turn off toggle healing Afuda. This will give you control over how many Afudas you throw, enabling you to effectively alternate between Afudas and Kunais. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Levin and most of you might know me for playing Symmetra and making funny videos but I also really like to play support sometimes. On support, I've peaked at rank 230 or Grandmaster 1. When I was starting to climb the ranks, Kirko definitely played a very big role in that stretch to Grandmaster to top 500. So today, I'm going to give you some tips on how to climb in higher ranks with her. First, we'll talk about how important her kit is. Her Suzu is able to cleanse any negative effects and can also make you invulnerable for a very short period of time. Knowing when to use this ability and have it off cooldown is very important. Swift Step allows you to teleport to anyone on your team in a 35 meter radius. You could use this to get in and out of sticky situations. Lastly, her healing of Hudu and Kunai. Kirko has a very large healing output while being able to deal tons of damage with her Kunai. Kirko's Kunai has no damage falloff and can deal 120 damage with headshots and 40 damage with a body shot. You could easily eliminate people if you land two consistent headshots. Lastly, Kirko has a wall climb passive like Genji and Hanzo. With this passive, it can be much easier for flanks and repositioning. 
Here's our first tip, knowing when to deal damage with Kiriko. When someone picks up Kiriko, their tendencies is sometimes to only heal when their team is taking damage. While healing in between throwing your healing of Fuda, you have a few seconds of downtime that can be used to sneak in a few shots of Kunai. This lets you deal damage while still helping your team at maximum speed. Second tip I would give is disciplining yourself on using your Suzu. Suzu is a very important ability and it can be used to counter tons of ultimates and negate effects. Most people will just throw out their Suzu when their teammates are losing health, just throw it. But whenever you do that, Anna or Junker Queen can answer your team and your only ability to cleanse those effects is on cooldown. So ult tracking enemies and waiting for Ana to throw her nade on your team is very important. Sometimes Ana can nade your teammates but they will be in a safe space or not in low health at all. If you realize they are anti but are in danger slash taking damage, hitting them with Suzu would be mostly ideal. The last tip I'll talk about is getting flank kills. With Kiriko's kit, she has tons of flank potential with her high damage kunai and swift step ability. This can allow her to get a quick kill and get out quickly. Usually you only want to do this when your team is able to stabilize without you. You don't want to leave your team critical while you go off for a flank kill because if you do this, you'll get a kill and when you're trying to get back to your team, most of them would be dead. So knowing when to do this is very important. Usually you would want to set up for a flank kill after a finished team fight or right before one. Hopefully you guys could use these tips to climb the ranks with Kiriko. If you'd like to check out my channel, I'll put it on the screen right now. Big thanks to Gulpi for having me here and to give you guys tips. I hope you enjoyed.